Professor Varus Avitane, why is the management of severe ulcerative colitis such an important subject? Okay, so um, especially severe ulcerative colitis where, where patients are actually admitted to hospital for uh, uh, their treatment, which means that they're, they're in some way not responding to their medications, is very important because it brings the patient to a crossroad of whether they continue with further surgery or whether they have a, med uh, a medical option for treatment. And it's also a very difficult time for patients because they, they realize that uh, perhaps in some situations that there might not be any other alternatives and, and it's, it becomes a very life-changing uh, subject for them. So it is an important topic and it's about trying to bring out all the modalities in a multidisciplinary way, including the patient, to try and make the best decisions for their treatment. What are the surgical options um, in UC in 2017 and how, has it, or how have those options evolved? So the options have evolved over a very long period of time, but the biggest issue for patients has been that they haven't wanted, or there are quite a few patients who wouldn't want to have a permanent ileostomy uh, for the rest of their life, given that they're very young patients. And I think the, the, the ability to restore continuity so people can actually go through uh, the normal way uh, to the toilet has meant that the surgical options are perhaps not as uh, um, psychologically damaging to the patients as one would think before. But the big developments have come in, in trying to reduce the failure rates of the surgery for the patients and improve their quality of life. Minimally invasive surgery is one of the big uh, uh, advances where you don't tend to have a lot of scarring and so it is a lot more acceptable for patients uh, to, to uh, tolerate surgery or to accept surgery as an alternative. Um, what will determine future treatment strategies? So, so I think, again, it is about uh, ensuring that the outcomes from both the medications and the surgery are important. There are lots of medications coming in to play, and, but I think the most important determinant in everything is going to be the quality of life of the patient because they, they've got to feel well in whatever they do, be it uh, the surgical option or continuing medical option. But there is a big fear for patients from crossing to one and the other and it's it's surprisingly either way and it is how, how we deal with that but it's the patient has to form the center of, of what we do. And especially for young patients do you think that um, surgical uh, or um, surgical options will be uh, can be avoided in the future? Um, I think that's the aim of everybody to avoid the surgical options but it, it surgery forms a good option and, and if you can delay the surgery for young patients, maybe psychologically it's better. But if you have a very sick person who is chronically ill, then making them physically better is also another option. So I think it's about having everything available and working what's best for those patients. And how can the principle of precision medicine be further developed in that area? So I think precision medicine is very exciting as a concept because it, it means that you're going to try and treat uh, uh, patients according to what, what their biology is, what their disease is, so what rather than have a standardized algorithm for everyone you're going to start to pick and choose patients who are more likely to respond to various different treatments and I think that, that that's really exciting it's certainly a newish concept and it's coming into being and I think there's a lot of work to be done but I think that that's certainly going to make a big impact on people's response to treatments as well so that people don't need to have to switch through multiple drugs and you'll have a better ability to deal with uh, situations better. But are there actually health costs, I mean health budgets available to, to do this kind of personalized so medicine? So I think at, at the moment it's a research based thing because yeah. it's trying to work out who's going to respond to what. But I, 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 I think that from a, uh, intuitively from a health economics point of view, you, you'll probably find that it's going to be cheaper because you're not going to have to treat a lot of people who are not going to respond to something with, with a very expensive drug for example. In a session earlier, um, there was talk about the appendix may play a role in developing ulcerative colitis and that there's a hypothesis that an um, um, appendectomy can 
prevent um, the development of the disease. What is your opinion on that? Yeah, so I think I think there's some evidence to suggest that 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 is probably true. But then on the other hand, there's also some evidence to suggest that it might increase your cancer risk in the long run. So I think all of these things have to be taken into account. It's certainly not standard treatment at the moment, and there there are a couple of randomised trials, both in the UK and the Netherlands, that 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 are. Uh, coming to place and I think they're going to give some very interesting answers but it'll take a long time before we know the answers to those questions. And just to wrap up in terms of uh, surgery what um, are the what are the exciting developments to be expected within the next so, so the main developments are the, uh, are the progression in the minimal invasive surgery as, as we were talking about doing uh, surgery from the bottom as well as the top, meaning that the scarring is less. But it's not just the scarring, we've found that in terms of the anastomotic leak rates and all of those, a significant reduction in that, which obviously means that the pouch function for our patients are much better as well. So uh, th th there are exciting developments in that regard. Okay, thank you very much for your thank time. Thank you. Thank you.